Okay, hi, now welcome back to this, which is my second video on hard water. Now, in the previous video, we spoke about what hard water is and what it does. Now, in this video, we're going to have a look at how we get rid of hard water, how we turn hard water back into soft water. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, if you remember, hard water makes it harder to form a lather with soap, and we need to use more soap. So, hard water wastes soap. Um, or other detergents, and in turn, this can waste money. Also, hard water, remember, can form scale. So it can form scale, such as lime scale. Okay, now, this is a problem in kettles, because it means that the kettles take longer to boil, because the lime scale is not a very good conductor of heat. But also, on an industrial level, if you have an industrial-sized boiler, if lime scale is forming there, then that's going to waste a lot of money. So the fact that it forms this scale causes a massive problem both uh, domestically in the home and industrially. And also, uh, hard water can interfere with other chemical processes. Whoop. Pen wasn't working there. Here we go. It can interfere. So it can interfere with chemical processes. And that is a result of the ions which are contained within the hard water. One example of this, which is a common example, is dyeing. So hard water actually interferes with the chemical reactions involved in dyeing. That's not dyeing as in death, that's dyeing as in coloured dyes, okay? So don't get those too confused. Now, there are two types of hard water which are named based on how easy it is or how we can remove the hardness. Okay, so one is temporary, temporary hard water. Okay, hard water. Now, a lot of the hard water found in a kettle, okay, you see all the scale and all the solids build up, but if you boil the kettle, those solids disappear. So if we can uh, remove the hardness by boiling, then it is known as temporary hard water. So, can remove hardness by boiling. Okay, by boiling. Now, the other type is known as permanent hard water. Okay, permanent hard water. Now, the names are pretty ridiculous because even though the name says permanent, we can soften permanent hard water. So it's not really permanent. We just say permanent with regards to whether it can be softened by boiling. Okay, so it cannot be softened by boiling. There are other methods we use instead in order to soften permanent hard water. Okay, so this is only for those of you doing the higher tier uh, paper. But we can have a look at equations which describe how temporary hard water um, is softened when we boil. Okay, so I'm going to do this in a separate colour. Okay, now if we take a look, what we have in temporary hard water, let's just move over so there's nothing else in the way. There we go. We have calcium ions, okay, which are present in the water which makes it hard. Okay, and we also have hydrogen carbonate ions, okay? So HCO3 minus ions, okay? Both of these are in solution, so we can write AQ, AQ. Okay, if you don't know this, then please have a look at the previous video, okay, where I do go into uh, the components of hard water. Okay, but if we have calcium ions and hydrogen carbon carbonate ions, when we boil, okay, so we'll put heat above here, because obviously heat is not a chemical. It doesn't go in the chemical reaction. It's a condition, so it goes above the arrow. Okay, we get calcium carbonate. Okay, calcium carbonate, and that is our scale. Okay, so our lime scale. Right, calcium carbonate plus water plus carbon dioxide. Okay, this is not balanced, okay, we need two of these guys over here to account for the two carbons that we're getting over here. Right, so this is a solid because it's scale, okay, water is always written as a liquid, um, it's never aqueous if it's in the liquid form, and carbon dioxide is given off as a gas when you're boiling, okay, that's why you see the bubbles. But if we have a look in a bit more detail, you know, it's all well and good me telling you this equation, but why does it actually happen? Okay, well, our hydrogen carbonate ions, okay, let's use a different color again, just so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to underline this in green, hydrogen carbonate ions, okay, if we take those and have a look at those separately, okay, 
Well, what's happening is when we heat, okay, when we boil, what's happening is that hydrogen carbonate ions actually break down. Okay, they decompose. They decompose into carbon dioxide plus water plus carbonate ions, okay, which are CO3 two minus charged ions, okay? These are in solution. Water is a liquid and carbon dioxide is a gas. So this is actually the important part, okay? This is the reason why heat allows us um, to get rid of the hardness of the hard water, okay? The temporary hard water. And so once we have formed the carbonate, okay? This is important. The carbonate is what is going to react with the calcium ions. So Ca2 plus, you will notice the charges cancel each other out, okay? So the calcium ions, which are in the temporary hard water, plus our newly formed carbonate ions, which are also in solution. Now the charges cancel each other out, so it's just gonna be a ratio of one to one, forming our calcium carbonate, okay? That is a solid, and that is our scale, as we can see up here at the top. Okay, so it is a two-step process, really. We are forming um, carbonate ions from hydrogen carbonate ions and then adding those carbonate ions to our calcium. And that is the reason why we can soften temporary hard water. Okay, but the problem here is that permanent hard water, a lot of the time it contains different things to the temporary hard water, of course, okay? So permanent hard water often contains things like sulfates, Okay, sulfates. Now, sulfate ions, they are different. As they can't be broken down when we boil, they can't be decomposed, okay? You would actually need a much higher temperature, and that's why they stick around. So we need to use other methods in order to remove the hardness from permanent hard water, okay? So, so let's find some more space. Let's move over here. Here we go, so removing the hardness from permanent hard water. Okay, there are more than one method, okay? But method one, we're gonna say, method one, and this follows your textbook's examples, okay, is using washing soda. Washing soda. Okay, now, what is washing soda? Well, washing soda actually contains sodium carbonate, okay? Sodium carbonate. Carbonate, and that should ring a bell already from the previous equations we were going through because we see this carbonate, okay? And that's very important. So if we add sodium carbonate, the sodium and the carbonate will basically break up from each other and you have carbonate ions in your solution. And therefore, we already have calcium ions in our hard water, but this time it's permanent hard water, okay? Because you've probably got sulfates in there. Now, if we add our carbonate ions, which come from sodium carbonate over here, okay, then we have exactly the same scenario as we had uh, when we boil temporary hard water. Okay, we are getting carbonate ions produced and calcium ions, which can then react to form calcium carbonate. Okay, and that is a solid, and that is of course scale. So that scale helps us because it turns the water from hard to soft. Now that's exactly what happens when we produce scale from temporary hard water. But in this case, we are doing it when we want to. We don't have to boil it, okay? And we are producing the calcium carbonate quickly. Whereas when you are boiling, you probably won't turn all of the water soft straight away. It's gonna take some time and obviously you're supplying energy to boil the water. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. The second method, okay, I'm gonna call it method two, is using what we call an ion exchange column, okay? So ion exchange column. Now, you'll hear more about this if you go on to do uh, A-level chemistry. Ion exchange columns are used a lot um, in chemistry. But how it works, okay, is we have a column, right, which has on it ions which are not um, calcium or magnesium ions which are causing the water to be hard so we might have sodium ions sodium ions or even hydrogen ions okay on the column okay now we allow the water to pass through the column and the calcium or magnesium ions 
okay, which are causing uh, the water to be hard, are exchanged. Okay, so they're basically swapped. Okay, that's why it's called an ion exchange column. They are exchanged with other ions. And so when I say other ions, I mean either these sodium ions or these hydrogen ions. So we basically swap the ions out of the water with the ions on the column. And why do we do this? Well, because the sodium and slash ore, okay, or the hydrogen ions, they don't make the water hard. So they do not cause hard water effect. Okay, and so that means that if we swap them, the water has gone from being hard and containing all these ions that we don't want to being soft because now they contain ions which we're not as bothered about because they don't make the water hard. And so we have basically turned the, ion, the water sorry, from permanent hard water into uh, soft water. Now importantly, the columns, columns don't have an unlimited supply, so do not have unlimited ion supply, okay, because you can imagine that, like everything, it's um, a limited resource. Our, our ion exchange columns aren't infinitely large, and so they're going to have a limited amount of ions, but we can recharge them. There we go, we can recharge them. We can recharge, okay, that's the term we use, by replacing with new ions. So basically, it's just like recharging a battery, we can add new ions to the column and so it can carry on working with new ions. Now the way that we do this is we add salt. So normally it's sodium chloride, okay? So we wash the column with a sodium chloride solution, okay? And once we do that, that means that we can get rid of um, the ions that we've exchanged onto the column. So now magnesium and calcium are going to be on the column and we don't want to exchange those back into water to make it even harder. So we need to get rid of those by washing with sodium chloride solution and then we can recharge by adding more ions and that allows us to use the column again because the sodium from the sodium chloride recharges the column. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. I hope that was helpful. Um, now you can see from the last video what hard water is and why it's a problem. And then on this video, how we attempt to deal with those problems. If you do have any questions on the topic still, though, please do feel free to put a comment in the box below or send me a direct email using the link I've included. But as usual, please do like and subscribe and share if you have found this video useful. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.